everybody, and welcome back once again. Another edition of Inside the Headset. I got on we I got on the phone with me, head coach of the Christian Brothers Purple Wave, uh, head coach Thomas McDaniel. How you doing, coach? Good, so how are you? I'm doing good. Uh, was not in action last Friday night, so let's pick it up right there. Um, so you practiced Friday, and then what did you do from there? Well, from there, I went home and cooked hamburgers for my family and uh, enjoyed time away from, uh, you know, the grind, so to speak. So I won't get another, you know, Friday off for uh, at least nine weeks. So it was nice uh, for us. None of the people that we play in the near future uh, were, were at home. Uh, everybody was out of town. So uh, the closest game that we could have gone to was Houston plays uh, Henry County last uh Friday night, and I wasn't going to make that two-hour track. So, uh, just enjoy time with my girls, and uh, last little bit on Friday evening and Saturday, and then obviously uh, got back to work Sunday on Saturday, and then getting you know game prep for this week. So Monday you had practiced, and uh, what did what did uh, the Purple Wave work on? Um, you know, last week was real physical and a lot of combative drills, and just trying to kind of get them, you know, better on our toughness and physicality. This week was, uh, you know, obviously getting more back on schematic things, uh, you know, stuff that we got to correct. And, you know, just, to, I guess the biggest thing is we're not, you know, right now we're not doing a whole lot of things offensively or defensively. We're trying to master a few things. So just holding in on the details that sometimes can get overlooked. And, um, you know, again, really more worried about us than we are our opponent at this time. So it's not any disrespect, but it's just that we've got enough to, concern ourselves with that we don't need to be jumping our mouth with a lot of uh, outside information. So just uh, the details, continuing to work on our practice energy, our efforts, sustaining at practice and trying to, you know, again, just kind of molding the culture of what we need uh, to do long term and, uh, and it's day to day. So, uh, you know, uh, whether it be uh, the intensity of the drill or the, the focus level uh, when we get deep into practice or the, just the energy created by the seniors and our leadership. Whatever it might be on that given day, things we got to get better at. That's what we're focusing on. Uh, fairly, what do they like to do? Uh, what 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 what, uh, what will the Purple Wave fans see out of them on Friday night? Well, I mean, they're a young team, uh, new head coach. Uh, you know, the way the head coach that's there now was the defense coordinator Trezent last year, which uh, Trezent's been in the state championship game a couple times in the last few years. But but they, uh, you know, the spread. Uh, but really, mostly one back, uh, 10 personnel, so a lot of doubles and trips. Uh, they, they don't really uh, do a whole lot uh, in the run game. Now, I will say it's a little bit odd because they had uh, they had two games under their belt. They only had one. They lost a close game to Humboldt week one. And then last week they played a small school out of Mississippi and, and really beat them fairly uh, handedly. So um, it's kind of a tough two games for them. They had one loss against a good opponent. And then the, uh, last week I – I think they won by almost 50, but they have a young quarterback. Uh, you know, somebody on another radio show, or, or excuse me, somebody on a radio interview last night asked me about the difference between Middle Tennessee and, and, uh, and the Memphis area as far as football. And I think one of the main things that I've learned early on is, you know, when you're dealing with a lot of the schools, the numbers are drastically different. And I think that would be a case in point where, you know, they've got some talented kids that are athletic, but just depth-wise. I think they have like 34 kids on the roster. So, oh, God. I mean, yeah, so their numbers are a little bit different than what, you know, obviously uh, you're used to seeing uh, in, in some of the schools and even in the national schools. Uh, but but uh, I think depth is going to end up being an issue against us uh, for them. But, uh, you know, again, our, our biggest thing needs to be about starting fast. You know, we have so many things that we have to work on. One of the things I was proud of during the last session game was our sideline organization. I thought, you know, considering – uh, everything, you take some stuff for granted, but everything's new. And, you know, when you got a new coach, and it's the way that you want things to be on the sideline and the way you rotate personnel on the game and where you want people to stand and how you want the sideline to look and all that stuff. People don't think about it, but it's all important. And uh, so I was really proud overall about the way we handled the first game. But, uh, you know, hopefully we get to rotate more people in this week. And, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how kids are locked into the game and when we call for certain personnel groups and so they're ready to go in. and make some kick game people in there and whatnot. So, uh, again, just taking that next step, and hopefully, you know, kids will uh, 
I'll, I'll do a good job, and they've been listening and, and focused in on the attention to what we need to do, and, and uh, you know, trying not to tell the tell. But uh, we're, we're excited, honestly, to get back to our play again. Did you see in the White Station game, did you have to call an unnecessary timeout because team wasn't ready or you had a guy not on the field or any point no. during that? Okay. Yeah, that's what, yeah, we did We did a really nice job of, uh, of those types of things within the game against uh, White Station. I think we did have uh, one delay of game penalty. Yeah. But, um, you know. Um, that, that ain't too really, bad for the first one. I mean, you, you got. You right, know. right. Yeah. You know, we, we, we had, uh, I think, one false start. We had four penalties in the game, uh, and one of them was a false start, one of them was a delay of game. But, but um, you know, I, I thought all in all, uh, with the exception of obviously our tackling and some things that we did, uh, you know, that we did not do per se against Dylan Mitchell, uh, we, we played really cleanly, uh, all things considered, for the first game, no turnovers, no punts. Uh, not, not too many penalties, et cetera. So, um, yeah, like I said, we, we really did a nice job of our, I guess, in-game and, and uh, sideline, you know, organization and stuff like that. But it's still stuff that we can continue to prove on and hopefully, you know, just get better at it. Well, good. Uh, walk through tomorrow, I guess? Yeah, we, yeah, we have, uh, you know, just some typical walk through for us tomorrow. We have uh, um, Donna Day School, which is a local – School for young uh, young adults and young uh, youth that uh, are Down syndrome uh, that are uh, coming over to school and uh, participating in practice with us, which I think will be a really cool thing for our kids and theirs. Yeah. And then they're going to come to our game on Friday, so it's really it's cool for our kids to be involved in stuff like that, give back, and also you know at the same time see how fortunate see how fortunate you know the, 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 their situation is that, that they're able to go uh, you know practice football every day and, and then also to see the smiles on some of the kids' faces that even though they have, you know, uh, bigger issues than uh, what their algebra grade is, they can still have a positive atti attitude. As you all know, you, there are kids that have those kind of special needs. They're, a lot of times are very inspirational. So I'm excited to see how our kids interact with uh, Madonna School, uh, uh, you know, kids tomorrow, and then obviously let them come to practice and put on a jersey, and then they're going to come to our game Friday and, and uh, stand on the sideline for a warm up and all that. So that's a cool thing. We'll do that partly tomorrow, partly on Friday, and then uh, we're doing team meals on Thursday night, very similar to like what we did at Oakland. And uh, you know, obviously that idea started with, uh, well, I guess it started with uh, uh, Conquer Dennis Sal and, and uh, the, when the game stands tall. But, you know, John Jones did it uh, for us at Oakland, and we've been able to get some parents and stuff up to Christian Bowers. Well, good. Awesome job. Yeah, getting that organized, and so we'll have another team meal tomorrow night. And that's uh, pretty special because we got a lot of alumni coming back and speaking to our guys, and I think – it's important to us at Christian Motors to get the alumni involved and obviously, um, you know, let our kids understand just how important it is to put on the gold helmet, what it means for the community. It's a very strong alumni base, so, um, you know, as a kid, you don't really understand or appreciate just how big a deal the school is to you long term, but uh, for them to hear alumni talk about it, it's very good. So uh, I'm excited to do that again tomorrow night as well, and we'll kick it off Friday night. Well, I'm I'm really uh, I'm really glad to see faculty, administration, staff, as well as yourself and the football players, uh, you know, doing that for those kids and everything, and even the tradition you're carrying on over there, you know, starting something new with those kids and developing a memory of the the Thursday night meal and all that. It, it is important, and uh, that that is a uh, that is a very cool thing you're doing there, and I'm they won't appreciate it as much now as they will ten years from now. That's right, and I mean that's what it's. I mean, you know, like I'm talking to you before, I think. Mean, as I've gotten a little older and I, I learned to appreciate the wins a little bit more, but uh, I, I really do appreciate the process of the season more than I do the games themselves and just the, the week-in, week-out preparation, all the things that go into a game. But, but I think more than anything, I think it's about the relationships. And, uh, you know, it is relationships as far as coaches to coaches, but it's also, you know, at the end of the day, it's coach to player and trying to, you know, build that unity to where kids trust you and believe in you and, Hopefully, uh, you know, respect you enough that they'll come back and, and want to uh, be involved in the program somehow, but also uh, to know that, uh, you know, if there's anything they ever can, can ask that you're there to help them. So, and I feel like I've got a lot of those special memories with my guys back in Murfreesboro, but getting to, you know, do that now uh, with a new group of guys, and it's the same, same scenario, same kids, and, and uh, you know, just another day, and, and just, uh, just blessed to be a part of uh, such a great school. How's your dad doing? Dad's doing great. My family's doing, you know, awesome. I think, uh, like I told you before, uh, transition here has been very smooth and uh, a lot smoother than I would have expected considering I've been gone for so long. 
but uh, the mom and dad are loving it. They're obviously deeply uh, invested into the Christian Brothers family now, and uh, you know it's just been uh, it's been a great experience. We had a lot of people there last Friday supporting me, and that was great. And uh, I guess kind of rekindled a lot of relationships that have been lost over the years, and um, you know, but it's all good, man. God, God is uh, God has me very much, and and uh, you know, like I said, I'm just very fortunate to be in the situation. Well, tell your dad to pay attention out there if he's going to be on the sidelines. I don't want him getting hurt. I don't think he, man, I don't think he was out there last week, to be honest. I think he, I think he was up in the stands for some reason. I don't know for sure, but uh, I don't even think he was out on the field last week. So, he, I think he figured out his best spot is up there on the aluminum somewhere. That could have been the funniest video that night when he got wiped out. That was just great. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm glad he's okay, but I mean... I know we watched it, what, 10, 15, 20 times at least. It, it, it was his highlight of his season. <laughs> yeah, I think that was uh, like a quarterfinal game, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it was. I, I, I don't know. He was watching He was watching another kid on the on the field, and, and the play just started toward our way, and it was a, it was a sea of uh, orange and blue and red, and we all got caught up in it, but I was right there. He took the brunt of it, man. But for an old, old little donkey guy, it's pretty tough. He got up and uh, – you know, and he, it could have been a lot worse. It could have been, and thank goodness he's all right. All right, 7 o'clock, Fairley's over at your place, right? That's right. All right, 7 o'clock, join Coach McDaniel and all the people there at Christian Brothers Purple Wave and, uh, and support him for a 7 o'clock game against Fairley. Y'all be there.